Hey my beautiful friends, your girl Ellen Blue and welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, please subscribe, like this video and share and also click on the notification button so that you don't miss out on any new content as it comes out. I really enjoy having you guys around so please stick around. If you are a returning guest, thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking around with me. I really appreciate you guys, I appreciate the support and it's nice to know that I'm not just talking to myself on the net here. I really appreciate you guys. So um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Mick Mill's friend who decided to air him out uh, on a, a few things. Well, firstly, he said that he used to be somewhat of a bodyguard for Mick Mill. He used to like do things to people uh, for Mick Mill because, well, Mick Mill is a small guy, so obviously he couldn't get into his uh, brawl. And then the second thing is um, he was talking about how Mick Mill was not paying them, not giving them any jobs and not allowing them to, you know, like make bread for themselves. And then um, the third thing was um, the allegations about Mick Mill uh, abusing Nicki Minaj. So I'm going to um, approach this um, topic like from three fronts. The first thing I want to talk about, you know, um, artists who tend to have like friends around them and uh, how they deal with money and um, as well as employment and then I'm going to talk about um, uh, hang on, hang on, on. <laughs> that, that's, that's the only way I know how to, to describe them and then the third thing we're going to talk about the allegations that these allegations you know about the Minaj so well, I mean like you know when it comes to like the music scene especially like the rap world uh, you find that um, a lot of artists will have like a party you know around them like all the time either when they're going out or like when they're going to perform or even when they're going to like radio stations for interviews there will always be an entourage and amongst the entourage you'll find that like sometimes they're relatives sometimes friends um, workers or just fans so um, in a situation like that you will find that a lot of those people are dependent on the artist to take care of them like to get them like uh, admission to pay like for their admission into places or to use that artist name in order to get um, access to you know like certain places or a food, I mean food and drinks while they are hanging out with the artists, they'll need that. Transportation, um, clothing, um, accommodation. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you find um, an artist entourage requiring from the artist. And usually um, when artists, you know, start out, they, let's say for example, if they start making money, um, new people who are probably like looking for fame on their own or who have been scouting the industry waiting for somebody like a new mark will gravitate towards that artist and you know it's and it's not like something which is unique to america because like i would say uh, globally you have like a similar culture you know like for example here in south africa when uh, my brothers and i started making music um, we had a lot of people you know join us you know um, initially there was like a whole crowd of people that were doing the same thing and like sharing ideas pretty much changing the dream together and then um, some people made it and some people didn't and then um, there was a time when my brother actually like moved out of the house and decided to like uh, stay at his own flat where he would like start a studio um, and we thought that was a great idea because then we wouldn't have to like bother our parents and stuff like that and then we would buy like our own groceries and stuff and just like focus on making music and then uh the next thing like um industry friends started coming around and they would bring their own friends so then you'd have like in a like in a recording session there'd be like a whole bunch of people sitting there just chilling drinking lean drinking alcohol you know smoking weed just hanging around you know sometimes i think it is good for the mood let's say for example if you're like doing like a, like a trap song and you need that energy and stuff it's nice to have like those people around so it's pretty cool it gets you in the right uh, mind frame you know if you're talking about parties and you already are in a party situation so that kind of makes sense but then what would happen now is that 
some of the people would not want to leave. They just decide that they want to stay and they wouldn't even ask to stay. They just stay. And then like you want to do like your own stuff or you want to like go out and have like food or something. And then they just like tag along and you end up not having any personal time anymore. And then there were times like I was coming to the flat and I wouldn't even have any place to sit because like everybody is sitting on all the sofas and all the chairs, even on all the beds. And then like you have to like stand or ask somebody to give you space to sit, which was really ridiculous, I think. But that was the situation. And the next thing, I was spending so much money buying groceries for all these people, you know? And then like, I'd have to like drive all these people around. And then some people would be asking for favors. Oh, take me to this place or take me to that place. You know, like things like that, you know? And I found it crazy. But I mean, you will find that for um, artists who are even more successful and make even more money, you have even more people hanging on and hoping to get a piece of that pie or hoping that you will make their dreams come true. So it is normal that you will get like a situation like that. So I think that for an artist who's like making a lot of money and actually like require a team, it would make sense to hire one of like the people or some of the people from your, from your, uh, entour from an entourage, from, oh my God, from the entourage to do stuff for you like i was watching dj academics this morning and he was talking about like how um like a guy who is like doing t-shirts can say hey i'm good at making t-shirts so give me a job i'll make the t-shirts for you and stuff and that makes sense but then you also have the issue of author authority you know like when you have your friends or your peers sometimes it's difficult to give them instructions and for them to you know listen to you because they feel like oh well you know we are the same age you know like we're friends why are you telling me what to do type of thing so yeah in a situation like that maybe you might want to hire somebody to manage everybody so that it's not like you who has to push everybody to do their jobs and if you feel like some people are not really actually doing jobs then don't hire them you know you look like you'd know amongst your friends what their personalities are like there are people who are just lazy and don't want to work and just like want to enjoy themselves but get the benefits so you wouldn't expect you you wouldn't be expected to hire such people but um, at, in the same breath, you know, um, this guy was saying that Meek Mill did not pull up any of like the friends in the posse. And he was saying like he didn't even want to like hire and give them proper jobs. Yet he expected them to do stuff like, for example, this guy had to like do things to people uh, behind Meek Mill's name. Like if something, some people annoyed Meek Mill, then this guy would obviously go and deal with them. And uh, like he would have to carry his bags and things like that. So, I mean, like, if you're using your people, you might as well give them salaries or give them positions where they know that they'll get, like, salaries. You know, like, it's nice to have security. So, it might be tempting to want to, like, just drag people along so that you can control them and not give them anything. But, yeah, I think that's just kind of, like, the situation that was there. But then, I mean, like, yes, hangers-on do exist. Uh, there are people who are fine if you can hang out with them but then like you have to like draw boundaries and like make them realize that okay now this is my house you have to go like now we're done with the studio session you have to go things like that you know so yeah that's what i was yeah i was really interested in when it came to that rant and then now we're talking about the Nicki minaj allegations Nikki um said in a documentary that like mcmill was putting hands on her and he came out and he denied it flat and he lied on me on me um, Nicki Minaj. A lot of um, Nicki Minaj fans actually believed it because, you know, um, there's a lot that of rumors that have been going uh, around about McMill and um, Nicki Minaj. And now that the friend has actually come out and confirmed it, he even said that at some point McMill like put Nicki out of the house, and then like at some point like uh, he, he like he, he kicked her out into like the night from the car and things like that, and then she was crying and stuff like that. So if the friends were there, why didn't they do something? Why didn't they in intervene? And not like yeah, your friend of course is like making money and and all that, but if you really care about your friend, you can give them counsel. So yeah, this was uh, quite an interesting rant, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, tell me what your thoughts are about this whole situation. Do you think like um, artists? should and can hire their friends should they take care of their um entourage and also do you believe the story about Nicki minaj and what do you think about that thanks a lot for hanging out with me you guys i love you so much have a good day bye